What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mitch Gray Show, another episode in the year 2020. And later on down the road, when you are listening to this, you will realize that if you look back in the history books during this time, uh, April 28th of 2020, the world was in a very interesting place. And uh, so for all of you listening uh, soon, I hope you're well. I hope your family is safe. Thank you for listening to The Mitch Gray Show. Make sure you go subscribe. And I promised you at the beginning of this year that we were going to only do shows with guests. And today I have one of my special dear friends and life on. Uh, We met through social media probably a year and a half or longer ago. And she's been on the show once before, so you can go back in the archives of The Mitch Gray Show and find her, Miss Kylie Johnson. Welcome again to the hey, show. Mitch. Thank you for having me. It's always hap- or it's always good to connect with you, and I'm happy to check in. Yes, I love it. And you've had so much transition in life that we're going to get to in a little bit that uh, will be awesome. So what have you been up to? It's It's been a while. Tell, tell the listeners what's happening in <laughs> Kylie's life now. Um, you know, I have just kind of been focused on a few goals. And one thing that really works for me is only choosing one or two focuses at a time. And a little over a year ago, I put two goals down on my whiteboard. I had the itch to get into commercial real estate. It was something that I had never given that much thought to, but I always listened to my gut and intuition. And one of the things I wrote on the whiteboard was get job in commercial real estate. And I'm happy to get say job. it happened. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that has been a big focus of mine over the last year. I studied and got my California real estate license, which was a big accomplishment to study for and go into and pass the exam on that. And I've really allowed myself to focus on working under a really amazing broker here in the Coachella Valley. I learned so much from her, and it's been good to have some structure in my life. Before that, I was freelancing, and it was just kind of like, oh, whatever I want to do is what I'm going to do. And now I need to be at the office by 8 a.m. Other than quarantine, in quarantine, I have to be at my home computer desk at 8 a.m. But <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's really helped having that structure of being on someone else's schedule, and it has allowed me to focus, and that has been a blessing, and to learn a whole new industry. Uh, The woman I work for, she specializes in cannabis real estate. We have a big cannabis cultivation uh, industry down here. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't just learning about commercial real estate for the past year. I've also learned a lot about the different legislation and world of cannabis. Yes, yes. So cannabis real estate, meaning land that they can grow cannabis on. Is that what that what that encapsulates? Yeah, so here in the Coachella Valley, it gets too hot, especially Mm. in the spring and summer, to do outdoor grows. So all of our cannabis is grown indoors, either in greenhouses or warehouses. Gotcha. So it's industrial land that then has buildings on it. The reason why it's so popular down here is a few of the cities years ago, they jumped on the cannabis train before many cities were allowing cannabis to be grown. So Desert Hot Springs is a big hub here in the valley, and she has a lot of properties out in Desert Hot Springs, and a lot of people come to grow their cannabis legally here in the desert. Right, nice. Yeah, so we're talking people building probably large greenhouses, needing commercial access. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's odd. What a shift, right? But the the real question is, When you show up to your computer at home at 8 a.m., still in pajamas, or do you get dressed? I get dressed. That's the real question. I'm a a get-dressed person. Um, I just feel better. You know, I'm I'm somebody who has always focused on how I feel and the energy in that. And for me, to change from my pajamas into actual clothes, whether it's workout clothes, whether it's a nice outfit or a dress, I'm going to change my clothes so that I feel better. Yeah, it's a mind shift, right? It's a mind shift. I've been developing a lot of material lately about working from home and 
trying to guide people on what you need to do. And one of the first things you need to do is get up and get dressed, like shift your mind. And it really helps. I'm also a big believer in taking showers, not yes. just for hygiene, but <laughs> right. for energy. Yeah. In the morning, I take a shower to shower off the night and to prepare myself for the day. Before yeah. bed, I take a shower to um, rinse off the energy of the day and prepare myself for bed. So, you know, those twice daily showers, that's been helpful yeah. in quarantine as well. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah. how's... Uh... You said it's pretty warm out there. Is it like crazy warm? Will it stay crazy? We're, out? we're starting to get into the hundreds now. Oh, wow. So um, for us in the summertime, it's normal to have 110, 115 degree weather. Yeah. And we've had many days over 100 for this past week. So it's definitely a shift in the comfortable weather, which we have most of the year, to right. the uncomfortable weather. So I've been staying inside a lot. Yeah. And if I go on a walk, it's like first thing in the morning between 7 and 8 before it gets super hot. Too hot, yeah. And lots of water, which you're drinking now. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and electrolytes, you know, yes. you got to do your coconut water or your electrolyte powder. And really, after a few weeks of this hot weather, our bodies do adapt to it. Right. So it's not that big of a deal. You just have to be mindful of it. Like, be smart. You're, gonna, you're not going to go out in like a snowstorm in the middle of winter for hours on end. You're going to stay inside. And right. it's the same thing here when we have really hot weather. You just stay inside. Yeah, yeah, we adapt. Yeah. We adapt. And hopefully you're smart about it, so... Um, so on your social media, everyone follow Kylie on Instagram <laughs> at Kylie Johnson. She's a great follow. Um, the reason I asked about whether you get up and get dressed or not, because I knew the answer because on your <laughs> stories, <laughs> you post every morning about what your, your attire for the day, but which I'm I think is awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. but you have so many other things. I think back, um, a year and a half, two years ago, when we first kind of met um, online, however that happened, uh, on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, you were doing this really cool thing every night and kind of giving this talk at, at every night on Instagram Live. Um, and it was kind of, for a while, it was actually my soundtrack for being at the gym every night. <laughs> and I would watch <laughs> you while I was at the gym. But it was really cool. And what I've noticed on your Instagram the last couple of months is you haven't done that exact thing before, but you've been doing a lot more kind of um, via your stories and stuff, just kind of still getting back to some of the ideas that you were sharing before about um, liking yourself and self-awareness and just a lot of the thoughts that you have, um, which is kind of, it's interesting, right? The, the human nature of not liking ourself um, is actually an interesting battle that I think more, I think all of us really fight that battle. I think very few people are vocal about fighting that battle or will even admit that they're fighting that battle. And so I think it was a couple of weeks ago, you were actually talking about that specifically about liking yourself and learning to like yourself and the idea of liking yourself. And so that would be kind of cool to dig into a little bit and see where that conversation goes. Totally. So if someone were to say, let's just play this out a little bit. <clears throat> if someone were to say, Kylie, I'm having a really hard time dealing with self and the idea of liking self. What would your response be to that? Well, first off, I always want people to know they're not alone. Like when you have negative feelings about yourself, you're not the only person in the world to have negative feelings about yourself. You're not the first person in the world to have negative feelings about yourself. It's part of the human experience. And if you want to think about how we have entire industries that are founded on making people feel inadequate so that they buy into mm. whatever that is, whether it's a weight loss pill, whether it's beauty, cosmetics. I mean, we have so much that we're bombarded with in terms of media, entertainment, that is meant to make you feel inadequate. All of the mm. photoshopping that happens, we as individuals look at those images that we see day after day and we think, well, gosh, I don't look like that. Like, I must not be good enough or I must not be what is desirable. So you have to first explain to yourself almost like you're talking to a child of being like, 
it's okay. Yes, you're seeing all of those images that aren't like you, but that doesn't take away your unique specialness. Like, just because that's what we're being shown doesn't mean that you're less than. So when you start to realize that you're actually being attacked every single day through those industries, for me, it almost makes me want to fight back and be like, no, I'm good without whatever it is that you have to sell. Yeah, it's almost like for some reason, the sales approach um, in, in the new age of selling, you know, probably 15, 20 years ago shifted from here's a product that we have that you can choose to buy or that might enhance your life because sometimes products are actually things that that improve our, our living it's, it's almost like it shifted from here's how we can benefit you in a positive way to here's what's wrong with you and here's why you need us and it's almost like that shift happened really rapidly and you can almost see as generations you know the last few generations of young people especially that have grown up it's like they grow up with this denial of self-efficiency from the standpoint of, I do have within me everything I need. I don't need other things to make me better or greater or whatever. And it's really interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm of that age that I can remember in the 80s and early 90s. Commercials weren't that way. Magazines weren't that way. And this shift really took place and it does, it has an effect on our psyche and our emotions and our spirit. And it is a battle. So my thought is, okay, if we identify that there's these industries out there who are promoting to make us feel poorly about ourselves, the number one thing that you can do, the first thing you can do, just cut that media off. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to buy fashion magazines. I don't buy fashion magazines anymore. I used to watch more reality TV shows of unrealistic lifestyles. I don't watch them anymore or I limit my exposure to them. So that's the first step that I would recommend is cut yourself off from things that make you not feel good about yourself. If you're following unrealistic models on Instagram that then make you feel poorly about yourself, that's your response. Well, then don't follow them. So the first trick is like stop the external influence. And then let's start to go within and to realize, first off, no one expects you to be perfect. Yeah. So th realizing that you're never going to be perfect, no one is perfect, take, just take that off the board. You know, you're never going to achieve perfection as a human being. Just let right. it go. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah, but it's, I want to go back to the first point you made. Just get rid of the stuff that's making you feel terrible. Mm -hmm. It's like no one's forcing you to watch those shows or look at that social media. But it, but we, we all fall down the rabbit hole, right? It's like, addictive. Like even the best of us fall down the rabbit hole and we're like, oh my gosh, I spent two hours today on social media looking at stuff that I don't even need to look at, much less... If you're surrounding yourself with things that just constantly bombard you with, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. And you eventually listen to those voices. They become powerful if we allow them to. Yes. Very powerful. Yeah. And then to say, I, I have this saying that I've kind of grown accustomed to over the last few years, and that is, I choose practice over perfection. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Because the idea of practicing and not worrying about, about perfection, and I've, apply, I've started applying that not just to my living, but to my work, to my mm -hmm. art. It's almost like become my mantra in life that I'm just practicing. And the reason we continue to practice is because we'll never get it perfect and we'll never, we'll never feel perfect. And so we just continue that idea and it relieves so much pressure. It does. It does. It's like when you let go of that idea that you're going to achieve perfection, then it gives you the freedom and allowance to be like, okay, well then why don't I just accept where I'm at? And if I choose to practice, I can. And there is actually a practice that I've used over the years that's really helped me develop a positive relationship with myself. And that's actually the act of discipline. Okay. Now, not being like militant, I'm definitely not militant with my discipline, but I've found one of the best things that I've ever done was, it might sound silly, 
but it was doing one of those 30 day fitness challenges. Okay. Like you see the little meme pop up and it's like day one, five yep. squats, day yep. two, 10 squats, day three, 15 squats. By having the discipline to stick to one of those like little challenges for 30 days, even like if I was in bed that night and I realized I hadn't done it yet, <laughs> I would get up and I would do my squats. Yes, yes. By practicing the discipline of showing up for yourself every day in something small like that, it actually does build this strength inside of you that helps you start to respect yourself a little more mm -hmm. because you set a goal and each day you worked towards that goal and after 30 days, you're like, I did it. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. didn't think I could do it and I did it. And so I think that when you add discipline into your routine, it helps you build this positive relationship with yourself. Yeah, it's almost like when you put yourself in those moments, A, you learn a lot about yourself, things that you may think you have known or things that you didn't know at all. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest thing that you learn about yourself is the idea of strength. Because mm -hmm. we're all much stronger than we give ourselves credit for. Yes, that is so true. And so to build on that strength and go, wait a second, I, I did do this, you know? And it could be as small as... Um, say someone doesn't have a great diet and they drink soda all the time, go mm -hmm. seven days without drinking a soda, replace the soda with water. Um, mm -hmm. say someone wants to do something physical, like what you're talking about, take on a 15 or 20 day challenge. Like you don't have to bite off the whole piece of life at one time. And when you lay those blocks and build on them, it does become easier over time. And then you can start pushing your limits a little bit. Yeah, I I just really encourage people like to start small, mm -hmm. try something out. You don't have to take on like a huge 90 day challenge. Like I read about this challenge. It was like drink a gallon of water every day, 30 minutes exercise outside, 30 minute exercise inside. Like, no. we'll it. <laughs> it, it was just like, it's too much, you know, it's uh, too much to start there. But if you can choose a small challenge that's meaningful to you for a yeah. week, for 15 days, like start there. And then the next thing that I think of when I think of actually developing a relationship and liking myself is I give myself the opportunity to just spend time getting to know myself. Like, tell tell I us how. As a culture, we're so used to filling up any spare minute in our schedule, talking to someone else, going yeah. out with someone else, dating someone else. like spending time watching TV, like mm -hmm. no one just takes the time to kind of sit there and be like, huh, mm -hmm. I wonder what I would like to do. And then try something out. If you've always wanted to paint, try painting. If you've always wanted to get into racquetball, go try racquetball. Like it's okay that you've never done these things before, but give yourself the opportunity to discover things that you enjoy doing and then plan those things into your free time. You don't have to give up your whole life to go discover yourself, you know, an hour on a Sunday, 20 minutes before work in the morning. Like, yeah. just try stuff you might like doing. Yeah, it's amazing how we totally set ourselves aside for the busyness of life. Yeah. And that that busyness could include work or relationships or kids or whatever. And we just totally push ourselves aside. And what's amazing to me is decades can go by before we wake up and go, I don't, I don't even know who I am. It's even more crazy that I know people that have lived a whole lifetime and have never known who, what, how they are, like anything about themselves. Um, and, and that's just, it's so critical to me what you just said is taking time to get to know yourself. There's another idea I love trying to work within, and that is living within the power of silence. Mm -hmm. Nothing teaches you more about yourself than silence, than having it's to- It's really sit. uncomfortable. It's, um, it's crazy. And when you learn to sit within that silence, it becomes a miracle. It becomes healing is what it becomes. And you can, you can package that however you want. Some call it meditation, some call it prayer, some call it both, some call it, you know, 
harnessing, channeling, ener energy centering. I don't care what the packaging is. Just mm -hmm. try the idea of sitting with yourself in silence. That that's a very scary thing. It's it's very difficult to do, but I think it's the open door to what you're talking about, to discovering and giving yourself permission to really find out who you are, what you would like to do to try new things. Yeah. And I think we owe it to ourselves. Like you can blame everyone else if you want to play the blame game and you can yeah. say all the reasons why you don't have the opportunity to get to know yourself. But in reality, everything in our life, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And I know very, very, very successful business people who run multi-million dollar businesses and somehow they find the time for 30 minutes a few times a week to spend on themselves. And I just don't think that people have a reason why they can't do that. I know working moms who wake up in the morning and they spend a half an hour doing their workout before the kids wake up because that's important to them to feel good for the rest of the day, to feel good for their family. So I just think it is really important to put yourself in a position of getting to know yourself and honoring yourself. Because if you don't real honor and respect yourself, how, are, how do you expect other people to do that right. towards you? Right. I think it's the idea of exchanging the stress because what I've found is the people that have, um, the people that are working really hard, maybe having to work two jobs, maybe having to juggle all these things, it, it, it becomes almost more, um, takes more effort for them to exchange the stress of life with taking time for self because it's almost like um, I just think of moments in my my life where maybe I haven't had as much financial stress, as much career stress. It was almost easier for me to go, yeah, I'm going to spend 30, 30 minutes a day doing this. Where in the moments that I've been living, you know, barely surviving, barely making it by, it became but because life was more stressful. I almost didn't consider that option. And so it's almost like making a game plan to say, no, 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 I'm going to exchange this stress for investing in myself. Even if it's 10 minutes for today, it's something. Yeah, and also when we're really, really busy, what do we need to do? We need to control the thoughts in our yes. mind. Yes, 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 there may be a lot of things happening and we don't have the flexibility in our schedule. Well, guess what? You can practice positive self-talk. Like the way people talk to themselves in their mind, I mean, I used to do this when I was younger, it's so mean. It like, we treat ourselves worse than so we would treat anybody else. <laughs> I know. It's, it's just crazy. And yeah. so when I learned about the concept of treating yourself the way that you would treat a small child or the way that you would treat a friend, when I started learning to talk to myself that way, like I would, you know, I would beat myself up about something like, oh, you should have done it that way. Or why weren't you smart enough to do it that way? Or you should have said this. And I thought about it, I'm like, how would I talk to a small child? Mm -hmm. I would have told them, like, it's okay, honey, like, now you're going to know different next time. Or, mm -hmm. you know, well, let's just practice this so that we can get better for next time. Like, you're not going to beat a small child up for making a mistake right. or saying the wrong thing. Right, right. Yeah, it's almost like I think about, you know, I've spent my lifetime inspiring other people. And I've, I don't think I've, I can't recall the time I've ever looked at someone and said, Kylie, you can't do that. You'll never accomplish that. But you know how many times I've told myself that? A lot, right? Yes, it's amazing when you start taking inventory. I want to go back to something because you just mentioned it. Um, a while ago, you mentioned this whole idea about talking to your inner child. Mm -hmm. And you kind of alluded to that again. Dig into that a little more because you and I have had a lot of conversations over the past uh, year or so about that development of inner child and getting back into a relationship with that. And some of our listeners may be hearing what we're talking about and go, I have no idea what you just said, inner child. Like, what does that even mean? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yes. Okay. So I can't even think of, by the way, I love your excitement level when you, you're you like, yes, this is where I want to go. Well, I just think that it's such a huge, huge, huge part of self-development, self-healing mm -hmm. and I can't remember where I learned the concept of it, but I have done a lot of inner child work either through working with a therapist or once I wasn't working with a therapist, just on my own. 
And for me, what inner child work means is getting into more of a meditative state on my own, like allowing myself to relax, taking a few deep breaths. And then what I do is I check in with that little three or four year old Kylie, like everyone's inner child is going to be at a different point, a different like age. Sometimes I need to talk to 11 year old Kylie. Sometimes it's six year old Kylie. But the point is going back to that younger version of yourself and as your adult self being there and asking that younger version of yourself, like, honey, what is it that you're feeling? Like what Mm -hmm. happened? Can you tell me like why you're upset? What's going on? And if you listen, that little younger version of you will actually tell you what they're upset about. Mm -hmm. And this is the magical part of the the exercise is the adult version of you gets to make it better for Mm -hmm. the younger version of you. Like Mm -hmm. I would have to tell myself like, you know, Kylie, it's going to be okay. Like you are an amazing person, even if your feelings are hurt right now. Mm -hmm that doesn't take away who you are as a person. And I love you and I'm here for you and I support you. You have to be so kind yeah. to this little inner child that you have. Yeah, let's call that redemption. <laughs> yeah, if you think about what, what what's happening there is you're saying, uh, first of all, let me backtrack. There's this idea of beginner's mind and the idea of beginner's mind is very much what you're talking about. The, I, I tell people constantly, the dreams you had as a child, the mm-hmm. passions and the imagination you had as a child is the single most innocent time of your life because you haven't learned to talk down to yourself. You mm-hmm. haven't learned that imagination has the limits. You haven't been told by school teachers that you have to fit into this box or that. Like... All this barrage that you started this conversation with, magazines and shows and being put in a box, it hasn't happened yet. It doesn't exist in small child yet. And so I tell people all the time, if you can get back to beginner's mind, there's truth. Mm -hmm. There's truth Mm -hmm. in that. That's exact. And so what you're saying is that child's going to tell you the truth. And now you get to redeem that truth, Mm -hmm. which is miraculous yeah i love inner child work and guess what it's free (laughs) it is free it is it's free free therapy oh my gosh and so then to wrap up the session that i have like if she needs to cry i let her cry you know i give her a hug i think about what we can do together i basically try to be the most supportive adult figure for my inner child and let her know that she is completely loved and supported and taken care of and then i ask her if there's anything else that she needs to share with me and then i kind of come out of that meditation and you know i've usually cried a little bit or had some sort of release and then afterwards i seal it up which is a practice that i learned through doing these psy k sessions which is another type of therapy that i've done over the years um i do an exercise with my body to seal up that that session that we had Mm -hmm. and then i usually feel so much more free it's like okay I dealt with that. Let's move on. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. So in in all of your work and getting to know uh, your inner child and Mm -hmm. listening to those truths, how has that impacted your adult life? Like, are there any decisions you can think of or recall or any scenarios that, that dealing with inner child has directly led to an impact? Um, I mean, I would say just being comfortable in who I am as an adult, I would say that as humans, we're not born comfortable in who we are. Mm -hmm. And over time, we get more and more uncomfortable in who we are. So I would say that by being there and being supportive by my for my inner child, it's made me a more comfortable, confident adult. Because I don't feel like I'm trying to prove things because my I just accept myself. I don't know. Like when your inner child is supported, you feel like less threatened by life. Oh, I love that packaging. Less threatened by life. Yeah. Yeah. It's so empowering, right? Yeah. Cause Would- there's always going to be, 
adversity and there's always going to be people who don't agree with you and yeah. there's always going to be issues that arise like no one goes through life without conflict but if you fully support yourself and you practice being there for your inner child you're going to have a you're going to be better equipped to deal with the adversities that come up in life so what led to your exploration of this inner child liking yourself what was what was some of the watershed moments or thoughts or ideas that led to you going i need to know more of that uh, i would say being an adult with perfectionism issues <laughs> and ending up on a very very talented therapist couch that i didn't have insurance at the time and right. having to pay cash for each one of those sessions yeah um, you know, I would, I would say that just dealing with these negative experiences or feelings and realizing like, if I don't do inner work right now, I'm going to continue to feel crappy and I don't want to go through the rest of my life feeling crappy. I want to feel good and I want people around me to feel good and I want people and myself to experience all the joys that life has to offer. Like we have the choice if we want to stay in a victim mentality or a negative mindset, that's our choice. And I made the choice years ago that I was going to do whatever it took, whether it was paying for therapy, investing in courses, trying new things, because I wanted to feel good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So let's relate this back to liking ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like someone heard us say 10, 15 minutes ago. We're going to talk about liking ourselves. And then we move into this whole idea of inner child work. And for yeah. some, that may be the first time people have heard of that. So relate the idea of, especially especially as a woman, I, I think, you know, men and women both, we, we all, humans across the board, deal with a variety of self-pressure, lack of self-awareness, um, trying to live up to the expectation culturally to what's around us. But I really think as someone who's raised two daughters, um, it's very different when it comes to the, the female version of living with cultural expectation than it is from being a man. Um, and a lot of the things were the things you mentioned, magazines, models, social media. So when you're talking about liking yourself, dealing with inner child work, how does that those two relate to life as um, an adult and as a female? I would say that you have to switch your focus from being concerned about external. So mm -hmm. being less concerned about what other women think of you, what romantic partners think of you, what colleagues think of you, being less concerned with those opinions, which as Wayne Dyer says, someone else's opinion of me is none of my business. Right, right, you can right. spend your whole life stressing about what people think of you. But when you turn that around and when you start asking yourself, like, what makes me happy? When do I feel good? How can I support myself by thinking thoughts and doing things that bring me joy, why don't I focus on being in a state of joy and excitement and all that other stuff in my life, it'll shake out mm. because I'm spending my, my energy into those things that make me happy. And for myself, I know that if I go out in nature, I'm going to feel happy. Yes. So guess what? Every week I go out into nature. If I cook healthy foods, I'm going to feel good because I love to cook and I love to eat healthy foods. So that's what I'm going to do. It's almost like this experiment of figuring out what makes you feel good and then doing it and realizing it. no one else matters. Yes, I love my family. I love my friends. I love everyone. Right. But if I'm not making myself happy and doing these things for me, how can, how can I expect other people to make me happy? Well, and the whole and the whole thing is, we're we're I, I think at a human level, um, all of us live from this idea of learning to l like ourselves, so that we can teach others how to treat us. And I think oftentimes we don't know enough about ourselves to be able to set the boundaries of how we want to be treated. 
and there is so much hurt out there. I yes. mean, there's just there's so many hurt adults who are hurt, children who have carried around that hurt. And I have instances in my childhood when I was when I had my feelings hurt, when I was hurt about stuff. Yeah. But do I want to live in that constant state of feeling like crap? Right. right. I don't want to. <laughs> right. Like when you think about it. You, Mitch, spend more time with Mitch than anyone else does. Yep. And you're living in your mind and you're the only person experiencing your thoughts. Don't you want to live in a happy place? Yeah, my saying is you are the only person you will go to bed with the rest of your life. Yes. You're the only person. Like you're yep. born and you're with you and you're going to be with you the rest of your life. And whatever the next session of all this living looks like it's you like that's the, all there is and what's crazy though is um you know for for my upbringing and my culture that that i was brought into it was very a very selfish thing to do the things we're talking about it was a very selfish thing to focus on self to learn about self and i think so many people especially in america we were brought into these uh cultural beliefs and it takes years to peel the layers of the onion off and figure out why I have this perspective um, of self. You know, one thing that I, I haven't voiced a lot in my life, I'm starting to learn to voice it more, uh, but I deal with mental health a lot. I deal with depression a lot. What I've learned in digging into that is most of that is stemmed from what I was taught as a child. Mm -hmm. that it's selfish to do all these things we're working on. So for the person that, you know, I don't know if you've felt those feelings or not. I think we all do at some level or fashion. But as a person um, that says, you know, I'm trying to dig through all of this small child work to get to inner child to figure mm -hmm. out why I have what I have. What's a word of encouragement that you would give that person? Because that is not easy work. It is bloody and gory and embarrassing and gross and but at the same time it's miraculous and healing and redemptive so what's something you would say to that person who's maybe listening and going yeah that's the work i need to step into one of the best pieces of advice i can give is when i was younger i always wanted to figure out why mm -hmm. i felt bad why do i feel this bad why do i have this anxiety why don't i like my body mm -hmm. like why and i think that trying to figure out why you're never going to figure mm -hmm. out why mm -hmm. it doesn't matter why you don't need to know why to heal so i think that by accepting that you will never know why you feel the way that you feel let's just like throw that away let's just say it doesn't matter right you don't need to know why Let's let that go. Yeah. Let's instead work on healing the parts of ourselves that we don't care for and maybe poke some fun at it. Have ah. some humor with it. Yeah. You know, I, I'm trying to think of something that I don't like about myself that I can make a joke about it with. But the, <laughs> right. the point is, is like you can't take it too seriously. Yeah. Just enjoy the journey and, you know, if you are, if you have, I always go back to analogies with the body because I think it's really easy to relate to. If you have chubby thighs, I'm sorry, you're probably always going to have chubby thighs. Right. No matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you work out, it's like right. a genetic thing. Yep. Just accept your chubby thighs, like learn to love life and learn your, love to learn your, so. learn to love yourself. Yes. Even if you have the chubby thighs, yeah. like let's still exercise and eat healthy and have fun. But I don't know. There's this part of me that wants to tell people, like, just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be so attached to the hurt and trying to figure out why. Well, then we're going back to the idea of practice over perfection. Mm -hmm. That it's always going to be a process. Even if you grow a hundredfold from now till next year. You're still going to have something that exists next year that you're still working on. A friend of mine and I were having a conversation the other day. We were talking about uh, why people get uh, insulted when you use the word ignorant. Because mm -hmm. all ignorance means is lack of knowledge. And all of us will always be ignorant at some level because we can't know everything. 
Yeah. And so I think the idea of focusing on practice and process versus perfection can really relieve a lot of that pressure. Yes. And one more thing I want to say that ties in really well with inner child work is Debbie Ford has this whole theory around shadow work and shadow work uh, has to do with the negative aspects of self that we don't care for. It is totally healthy to have aspects of yourself that you don't like. Just because I like myself as a person, it doesn't mean that there's not things I dislike about myself. But years ago, when I started working through Debbie Ford's info on shadow healing or shadow work, um, I realized that it's okay to have stuff that you don't like about yourself. Right. So I don't have all the talking points to that <laughs> because it really has been so long ago. Yeah. But I guess it, I just want to reiterate that liking yourself doesn't mean that you are loving every single part of yourself. It means that you accept the negative dark stuff along with the positive light stuff. That acceptance, I guess that's the theme is accepting. Yeah, first of all, this is weird. You're the second person in two days in a row to mention shadow work to me. So, mm -hmm. so we may we won't dive into that this episode, but that may be uh, that may be a uh, storytelling that you and I need to dive into that a little bit more for another episode or something. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. Second of all, it's like I, I think we've started to view love from what what the culture has told us love is. And I think we've related love again to perfection that in order for me to really love someone, including myself, things have to be perfect mm -hmm. when really it's the word that you just use. Love simply means acceptance no matter what. And yes. again, I think we're really good at doing that to others. But then yes. when it comes to looking at the reflection in the mirror, it's immediately negative, 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 instead of being acceptance. Yes, I think that I'm, I'm writing the word acceptance down <laughs> now. I think that acceptance is one of the keys to liking yourself yeah. because you can spend your whole life striving, striving, striving but you're never going to truly enjoy the process if you can't just accept where you're at strive for something that excites you and just enjoy the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, enjoy the journey. That's powerful. Cause this is not an overnight thing. Like right. you don't wake up on Wednesday and decide you're going to like yourself. And on Thursday you wake up and it's done. <laughs> it's, it's just like this journey that goes on your whole life. And I'm 34 years old. I've been doing this work for over 10 years now. Yeah. And I still have moments where I'm like crying about something and I have to like right. go in, talk to little Kylie, yeah. figure yeah. it out. Yeah, they're not selling this at the drive through McDonald's. Like, no, not at all. <laughs> but not it's worth all. it. The reason it's hard work is because it's worth it. It is because you just feel good. Yeah. And once I let go of anyone else's opinion of how I was living my life, and once I realized that my choice on how I live my life, I'm the only person who is going to enjoy it or suffer based off of my choices. Like the way I choose to show up for myself each day, it doesn't affect anyone else. I don't have a partner. So right. I guess if I had a partner, it would affect them. If I had children, it would affect them. Yeah. But I want to show up as a positive, loving person for my future family. Yes, yes, for sure. And in the end, even though it could affect other people, the lasting impact is still on self. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, those kids grow up and move on. At some point, uh, people come and go for one reason or another. And so again, you're you're still the only person you go to bed with every single night of your life. And oh. that's the person you need to be there for most. And so that's why that's... And, and once we learn... What I've learned is what, as I'm working and learning to remove the thought that that work is selfish, um, mm -hmm. it's really amazing that when I can work on those things, I become more clear-minded about who I want around me Mm -hmm. what I want out of life. Now, the scary part of that is sometimes that means changes, but we have to trust that those changes are for the betterment of the health of, of life, not just for me, but for those around me. And I think that you said a while ago, it shakes itself out, you know, and I, and I think it truly does um, in the end. Yeah. And, um, 
I, I had a point there that I, <laughs> I was thinking of. I'm sorry. Um, the point is you want to be the best version of yourself for other people because by you showing up as the best version of yourself, you encourage and inspire others yes. to show up as the best person for their selves. Like yes. I don't show up on Instagram sharing my insights because I'm trying to show off that I'm a happy person. Okay. I do it because I want to encourage other people. You can feel good. You have a choice every single day. We have the choice of what we're going to think and what we're going to focus on. And I just want people to realize that they can feel good. And there's nothing wrong with being a happy, well-adjusted adult. Nothing wrong. Yes. You have nothing to feel shame about. Yes. I literally, this kind of, this kind of, uh, uh, kind of symbolizes what we deal with sometimes, though. I literally had a job about nine or ten years ago that I got written up. And the reason I got written up was because I was too happy. <laughs> so not kidding. <laughs> But that's the point of what you're saying is it's like we're trying to do all this work and oftentimes we get bombarded with another voice that says, no, you can't be that way. Mm -hmm. Which is why that sitting with self, learning from self, learning about self and saying, no, 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 I'm not going to live to the pressures around me. I'm going to instead live up to the idea that's within me. And um, there's a spiritual teaching that says the, the rushing rivers of life that will flow through you and out of you. And I think that's the idea that's being taught there is that life is about being a rushing river, a, 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 a life of energy, a life of um, that gives energy to others. And the only way to do that is to live from within and then manifest outwardly. Yes, and we are all energy. We're all interconnected. Yes. We're not robots. We're not computers. We're part of nature. We're all interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. And... I just want the people in my sphere and the people in the world to feel good. And I'm not saying that you have to have X, Y, and Z in order to feel good. It's a personal thing yes. by getting to know yourself, by getting to know your personal unique values, go off of those. Don't listen to what someone else says you need to focus on. Ask yourself what yourself wants to focus on. Live by your own set of ideals. And I think the more people who can become happy and like themselves, the healthier our world will be. Oh, totally. 100%. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, when, when, once, once we can all start learning to travel down this path we're talking about, the change in humanity is incredible. It, it's, it's, it's almost like what we're seeing with the change in nature now that humanity has slowed down. Factories mm -hmm. have stopped, traffic has stopped, and all of a sudden all these animals are coming out of the woods like, oh, yeah, I can act, interact in my old world now. Like they're, they're feeling all this out. And it's the same way. Once we can all start doing this work, it, it changes the whole, the whole game when it comes to humanity. Yes, 100%. Yeah. I love it. Let's, uh, let's go here really quickly, and then we'll start wrapping up. If you were in a room of teenage teenagers, they're in that pivotal time of life trying to figure out how to step into adulthood. And we're talking about liking self. What would you say? I would tell those sweet little teenagers <laughs> that they're is nothing wrong with whatever it is that you are interested in. If you're interested in frogs, if you're interested in space, if you're interested in designer basketball shoes, whatever it is that you're interested in, I want you to focus on that, have fun with that, do what it is that makes you feel excited. Don't feel like you need to focus on something just because another teenager is focused on that thing like you do you and as you get older as an adult the more true that you can be to yourself the better your life is going to turn out because of your authenticity and your strength to stay true to yourself yes yes that is awesome and to all the adults listening listen to that again <laughs> Because it doesn't change. And the reason I bring up teenagers 
is because it's almost like when we become adults, we again lose that innocence, that curiosity, mm-hmm. that adventure, that exploration. And so to all the adults, which most of our listeners are adults, that is the exact thing that we would want you to hear. Whatever interests you, whatever makes you come alive, whatever makes you feel passion and exuberant, explore that, explore that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Great job. Great job. Okay. So I have something new. We've never done this on the show before, ever. Okay. So we're going to start ending every show asking our guest five questions. Oh boy. But you can only respond to the questions in one word. Okay. Does that make sense? So I'm going to ask you, you're my first one. So if it totally doesn't work, I'll change it. (laughs) Uh, So you're my first one. I thought it'd be great to try it out on you. I'm going to ask you five questions. Every single guest will get the same five questions. You can only answer it in one word. Are you ready? Bring it on. Okay. Uh, Do you like to read books digitally or on paper? Paper. Coffee or tea? Coffee every day, all day. No, one word. One word. (laughs) You already broke the rules. (laughs) Coffee. Uh, Guilty pleasure. Uh, Chocolate. Ooh, nice. Uh, One thing you cannot live without. Lip balm. Lip (laughs) balm. Yes. Is there a certain brand you want to promote so that if we can get a sponsorship for you, we can? I, I almost said the name, but I was like, nope, I can't go against the rules. Um, it's Kiehl's lip balm. Kiehl's number five original lip balm. That's what I've used for like Ever? half my life. That would have been against the rules, but you tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, last one. Favorite season of the year? Summer. Summer. Nice. Which we're about to get. Our, has summer already started? I don't pay attention. I don't think it started I don't yet. Think it's either. I never. Somebody be like, Mitch, Monday's a holiday. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Like oblivious to that. Awesome, Kylie. Once again, you're great. Uh, any last words you want to give our listeners that uh, to close out the show? Well, first, I want to thank you for the work that you do and being an inspiring force in the world. I really appreciate uh, the content and the effort that you put into it. And I just want to remind people that you have the right to like yourself. You have the right to be happy, to enjoy your life. And I want you to know that you are worth it. And there is nothing wrong with liking yourself and enjoying your life. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you again for coming on. Um, friends, make sure you go follow Kylie on Instagram, Kylie Johnson. That's K I L E E Johnson. Uh, she's a great follow talks about things like this all the time, but better yet shows the food that she eats and the outfits that she wears and all of her <laughs> treks and hikes. I'm very jealous cause they're really cool. And so she's just a great follow. So Kylie, if you'll hang on for a second, we'll finish up after I hit stop recording. Uh, brothers and sisters, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope your family and you are safe. Please go spend some time with yourself. If you prefer to do that in silence, that would be great. And we just pray and hope uh, healing and a full life for you, whatever you need right now. So have a good day, friends. Make sure you subscribe to us. Follow us on social media at mgraymedia. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.